let's let's get this kicked off. Thank you to everybody for joining and for those of you that are starting to join. Uh, David, Steve, thanks for taking the time to chat with everybody. So we'll run through and have a quick conversation here and then leave plenty of time at the end for, uh, for Q&A from the audience. So if anybody has questions, uh, please feel free to, to submit. But we have the two founders of Vanilla here, uh, David Hauser and Steve Lockshin. Uh, Steve, can you kick it off and kind of explain how you and David met? And then David, would you, you know, kind of go into what attracted you to to partnering up with Steve to, to launch Vanilla? I thought you were going to ask him to validate if what I say is true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't willing to do that. Uh, we met when uh, one of David's advisors at, at Grasshopper, which is, was his prior company that got sold, and you can touch base on that, um, uh, called and asked a, a tax question. And so we were able to answer the tax question for him, and that led into some other discussion about estate planning, things of that nature, and David became a client of the firm uh, along with his partner. And that's how we met. Yeah, and so what's really attracted me to um, estate planning as a whole is, uh, first of all, I don't like paying the government for things that they shouldn't be paid for, so uh, tax optimization. Um, but really, it's quite interesting that the, the ways you can move things around, and we spend a lot of time structuring my personal estate, um, spending time with Steve and his firm, and you know, I, I really enjoy that. It sounds kind of weird, but I, I enjoy doing those things. Um, so when Steve you know, kind of brought this idea to me, it was very interesting. Cool. So uh, a wealth manager, estate tax guru, tech junkie, startup, how, how do you guys get together and decide that, you know, we're going to bring vanilla to life? Together electronically, um, because, pre-COVID. So, you know, uh, but it, it's interesting. One, we, we, we both think the same way. We're straight talkers, get right to the point on stuff, uh, don't want to mince words. Uh, results matter. Um, both kind of want to optimize the outcomes of the planning that we do. And so David was the, the perfect kind of candidate for a client. And, and as you mentioned, when I showed him what we were doing after we'd already effectively bankrupted him for estate planning purposes, so to deprive Uncle Sam of their peace, when I showed him what we were doing, he said, I want to get involved. And um, I said, how? He says, I want to run the company. Okay, let's do this. And he had, as, as I'm sure we'll touch on, the the chops and the network to actually take the vision that I had and really make it a reality. And that's what's happened, which has been amazing to, to, to actually watch. Yeah, I think what's really interesting about Vanilla is we have <clears throat> a very unique ability with Steve's expertise and years of doing this to implement these things, right? So we built a, an exceptional technology design um, and marketing teams to really build this. But with, without Steve's many, many years of uh, knowledge around this space, we, we wouldn't have been able to do that, right? And I think that's what's really unique about Vanilla is we can take decades of experience, um, put it into software, so it make it accessible to lots of people rather than just a few people. Yeah, and by the way, I think that that's an important thing to leverage off of because the reason the name of the company is Vanilla um, is when we were first trying to figure out what we were going to name the company as we were getting started, I was explaining the thing we did. And I said, there's, there's nothing crazy here. This is all vanilla stuff. And I said that a, a number of times. I went to lunch and came back and they said, we got the name for the company. It's Vanilla. But everything that this software does is either stuff that a good estate planning uh, professional can do in their head or can do in Excel. And all we've done is automate that process and help. I, I don't even want to use the word democratize because it's so overused, but really make it accessible for consumers and advisors alike. We don't have to be an estate planning expert to deliver um, a solution for clients um, and, 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 and consumers alike because consumers can self-serve themselves once an advisor gives them the link. So we're B2B to C, but this, this product is something that probably should have been built 10 years ago. And, and why was it not built 10 years ago? I think you got the challenge where the people that get taxes in estate planning are not the most tech savvy people. Uh, and the people who 
are tech savvy generally aren't interested in um, building this kind of stuff. This is just a, a, an interesting space. And when we were working with one of the major law firms to roll out part of this product for them, they said that exact thing. All the software that's available to us is clunky and, and old and not easy to use. Um, and you guys seem to understand estate planning and technology. I think also that uh, there's been changes more recently now, and I think we're going to continue to see this, where more people have taxable estates compared to the past. And as that continues, this needs to be opened up to more people. So traditionally, you know, taxable estates would be very, very large. And you know, now I think we're seeing that push down further and further. And I, I think that trend will continue. Um, where um, And then you combine that also with advisors um, losing other parts of their business, right? So you know, Betterman and others have taken pieces away, right? And now we really have to show where value is added. And if you want the best return, reducing taxes is where it's at. Yeah, 40% instant return with no portfolio risk. Pretty good. In in both of your opinions, why is estate planning kind of the last frontier? And why, you know, we saw it on the portfolio side, we're seeing it on the financial planning side. Is there anybody else doing what Vanilla does? Not that I've seen. Um, I haven't seen anyone. There are a lot, there are a number of players that are doing direct to consumer and some B2B to see um, document creation. There is, I'd say, a, a weak effort out there on the uh, personal financial statement side that really in incorporates estate planning, like what's in a generation skipping trust? Is there an inclusion ratio? What's Is it a grantor trust or not a grantor trust? For These are things for the complex estates. Um, so there, there are pieces that directionally had there, but I haven't seen anything that brings it all together. And then, uh, you know, as, as you talk about that and brings it all together, you know, a lot of the friction that we hear across the industry uh, for any new piece of technology uh, in wealth management, and Steve, I think you've said this on stage before, is that every advisor is going to listen to this and then go home and do nothing about it. <laughs> so so what, what can an advisor do to, to bring estate planning into their practice? Do they have to have your experience to get started with Vanilla? No, I mean, the, the, the premise of this is that it, it does make access, uh, estate planning accessible. So the, it, the interesting uh, history of the product is we were trying, we built in Excel this really complicated um, personal financial statement so we could see what people had, not by large cap, small cap, but by, you know, uh, commercial property versus residential property, vested and unvested equity, things of that nature. Then we wanted to see it was liquid versus illiquid, then what's in your state and out of your state, and then a waterfall of what happened. And, and that's originally what we wanted to create it, to create online was a version of this uh, to simplify the work that we were doing manually. Um, we quickly figured that's going to be a small group of people that we can serve. So let's create something that everybody needs, which is documents. You know, we're tired of paying a lot of money for crappy documents, or I shouldn't say crappy, good documents. And when you pay very little, very often we see crappy documents. And so we wanted to automate the parts of document creation, which should be automated, which is the intake process, the document creation, the review, but still include a lawyer in there to do the work. So we did that and saw that the uptake was much slower than it should have been. And the reason was advisors didn't understand if the clients had good documents or bad documents. And so we created this. And that's when everything kind of started to take off. We created this reporting system where somebody who knows nothing about estate planning just upload a client's documents. And our system will create a report that very eloquently lays out what a current plan looks like, who the fiduciaries are, the waterfall of assets, um, and the opportunities. So an advisor who may know nothing about estate planning can take someone's documents, upload them in there, and say, hey, You've got great documents and here's, I can demonstrate that I understand them by creating this report, or I can identify that your documents aren't great and provide you a solution to improve them for a fraction of the cost of what you would otherwise paid. Um, so long answer to, you don't need to be an expert to do this. Uh, and you don't even need to be a tech expert. Uh, we tried to make it super, super user friendly. 
And then from the tech side, will Vanilla integrate with advisors' existing technology? Yeah, so you know, today we're starting to already do some of those integrations for accounts and data and, and such, um, and looking at other platforms and partners um, that store client data or other financial pieces. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we really want to work with whatever the advisors are using. Uh, but most importantly, we're also outputting this in very simple formats, right? So a PDF that can be sent directly to uh, a client, right, as a deliverable and handed to them as a report on here's what's happening in your estate documents today. Here's what you know your fiduciaries look like, like Steve said, all those things. And that doesn't need integration, right? And I know for me as a client, the most valuable thing that I can get is that PDF once a quarter. Um, and you know, I don't really want to log in and see, you know, where, where assets are moving around or whatever. Like, that's not really what I care about. I care about the high level picture and seeing that on a quarterly basis. Great. You know, one of the things, too, that we're hearing across the industry is, is differentiation. Uh, firms right now are struggling to differentiate. Uh, there's tech coming in. How can a firm work with Vanilla to get set up to start to differentiate and then, uh, you know, an ideal world grow their practice? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's very easy to get set up and get going. And we're seeing some really exciting things happening on a prospecting side where, you know, advisors are taking these reports and using this in the prospecting process to close a client. Right. And very large clients all the way down to you know regular clients. Um, but using this as a method to show, hey, I understand what's happening. Um, I go much deeper than asset allocation. Uh, and here's an example of that with a very uh, detailed report. And then and then once they're in the system, once they've either reviewed what they have or created new documents, the, the, the system actually starts reminding them to check in on things. Like, are these the same fiduciaries you, that you picked last year? Do you still want them? Um, have you had any life changes? So the things that advisors are forced to do manually today are going to be automated by the system so that the advisor, and they're all white labeled. So it's all coming from the advisor effectively. Um, you know, reminders that your kids turned 18 and you should get a HIPAA release and healthcare and financial powers and then click a button and you're right in there creating. Them. So what what this should do for advisors is create a CRM, an estate planning CRM of sorts to make sure that client stuff is up to date. They know what it is. It's visually um, attractive uh, and it reminds them of things that they should do. And if the advisor forgets, the system actually reminds the client from the advisor. Um, so it's it's like having an estate planner in your office without having to pay the salary of that person. And, and on that point, like we spent a lot of time internally talking about, you know, how do we make our advisors look like rock stars, right? So that means what do those interactions look like? How do we build deeper and deeper relationships? How do we build relationships that go beyond, you know, the current person and goes to their kids and grandkids, right? And you know, retain clients longer. Um, and that's having the advisor forefront again and again, and then building those very deep relationships with those questions and other things that we can prompt the advisor to do to build a deeper and deeper relationship over time. And even small touches like when we do documents and such, you know, making sure they're printed beautifully and mailed out and like all those things, it's not the typical experience you would have when getting a state documents done. Yeah, in fact, in, in a, in a non-COVID world, um, the idea was the advisor would print or receive the documents and have a signing party in the office. So the client would attribute all the value of the document creation to the advisor when the advisor really didn't have to do anything other than send out a link or actually the system will send out a link if they want to do it that way. So super simple. And they bring in the notary, they bring in the, the, the clients and the witnesses to sign. They store the document in the system and the client thinks, wow, that advisor not only took care of my planning, got it done effectively and efficiently. I got it. I, I filled out the questionnaire at home and it's very user friendly. And then I just came in and signed. It's not the go to the lawyer's office, not sure how much it's going to cost you, ask a bunch of questions, schedule a second or third meeting, wait two or three months to get something back, then go back to the lawyer's office for changes, then go back for signing. Um, this is a very, very streamlined, simplified system. 
In terms of the system, you know, obviously a, a newer product. What's what's the vision? What's next? The vision all the way to the end. <laughs> no, what, but what's what's coming soon? That David and yeah. I will digitize ourselves, and uh, so David already uh, has. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I, I'll I'll answer the long the long run, and then I'll let David roll out some of the stuff that's coming out in the next next couple uh, releases, um, but. The long vision is, you know, one of the things that everybody has to deal with and and nobody obviously enjoys is dealing with death. And, you know, the book, the next book I want to write is, is Dying for Dummies that effectively helps heirs, you know, children of, of you know, elderly parents prepare for that. And just filing the 706 and getting all the information together is a nightmare. It's also very expensive. So what, what I would really like to see the end state of this solution be is something that's wholly integrated on both sides. As David mentioned, we can pull data in. We can push data out, uh, which it's already set up to do. It interfaces with the client but makes the advisor look better by proactively suggesting things that, it, that an advisor should be doing. But all the while, it's assembling data. So when that unfortunate event happens, it's literally push a button, drag a few things into the columns where you want them to be, which it'll guide you through, and crank out the 706. It's taking, it's taking you know, any, I think any good solution takes things that are a hassle in our life and makes them really simple, takes the friction out of them. Um, so that that's what I want to see us do long term, and there's lots of different ways we can do it. But David can talk about the shorter term things that we're actually rolling out in the next couple of weeks. I, I was just waiting for you to say, Steve, ecosystem or something like that, because that that is that is I your. You like to say that word, so I left it for you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, we're we're rolling out a lot of really exciting stuff, um, a, a number of more robust features for our ultra high net worth, um, you know, advisors. Uh, so going deeper into those things, ma making the family wealth reporting um, that we do on a quarterly basis in that PDF more robust. So adding things like insurance and tax, um, alternative investments, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and then also uh, adding more and more states to our documents. Right. So unlike others out there that might have a direct to consumer product or you know an automated solution that just outputs a document for you, we have actual lawyers involved. Um, so that means we need lawyers in every state. So we continue to roll out more and more states for our documents. Um, and I think, you know, we'll also continue to add more data integrations, right? So uh, today we have Quovo and Black Diamond and things like that, but we'll add more and more of those um, as the, the advisor base says, here's where my core data exists. Um one of the uh, the things that keeps coming up to from from different people is how does this replace or change my relationship with these very important estate planning attorneys that are COIs that are going to help grow my business? So the facts, at least in my experience, and then when I talk to a lot of advisors who ask that question, are is that they don't get that many referrals from estate planning attorneys. Um, and so I would tell everyone who asked that question, really look and see how much you get in terms of referrals. But that's not the important question. The important question is, are you sending them to the right attorney? Do you even know if they're a good attorney or not? Um, and the truth is the best attorneys, the folks that we typically work with for our very wealthy clients, don't like doing the basic stuff, the core documents. It's, it's an accommodation. And so they would very happily hand this off and focus on the things that are more intellectually stimulating. Um, and so the first question I think we, any advisor should always ask themselves is what's best for the client, not what's best for me. Well, I think too, also in that question, there's probably a, a secondary uh, question there that's not being asked, which is I'm worried I don't know enough about estate planning um, compared to, you know, if I just refer it to someone, I don't have to worry. And I, we spent a lot of time thinking through this and making sure you don't have to be an estate planning expert, right? That's why we have a lawyer involved. That's why we walk through the process. We do all of these different things um, and also give, give you, the advisor, all the pieces so you can understand this and have an intelligent conversation to deepen the relationship. So rather than being worried about, do I know enough? We should be worried about how do I deepen the relationship and add more value? 
Yeah, yeah and for, for people that aren't familiar with the system, what what is Vanilla doing to make the advisor smart so they they can handle the basic questions? Yeah, so uh, when you walk through the process, which can either be done independently with the client on their own or with the advisor, every one of these plain English questions have detailed explanations so you can understand why, what it is asking and why, um, which is, in my experience, better than what a lawyer does, which is like, here's a document, here, fill out some stuff that I don't really understand and I kind of send it back, right? Um, so this is really trying to build a deeper understanding, but also in all of the times when we surface an opportunity, we also try to also include, here's how you talk about this opportunity, right? So, hey, um, the caps for exemptions are going down. Here's why that's important. Here's the types of clients you talk to, and this is why we identified it for Steve, right? And so here's a template of a conversation in essence, right? Yeah, and to David's point on the walkthrough, um, when they're answering questions to create documents, there's a button that on every single question that says, I'm stuck on this question, where they can check that off, write in what they want. And when they do the review with their human attorney, um, they can ask questions and the attorney makes sure that they've answered everything correct. So again, we're not taking the human part of the advisor out, I mean, the lawyer out, we're taking out the um, extra work that's done by the manual process. So we make it easier for the lawyer, and easier for the client um, and far less costly. Great. And then in, in terms of an attorney, say there's an attorney that an advisor works with uh, that they like and is also interested in the technology. Can they use vanilla? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, they, they, A, they could become a vanilla attorney if they get approved and they use our, our system. Uh, so that's one option. And then one of the uh, products that we'll roll out in hopefully by the end of the year is a lawyer version where the lawyer, instead of having the client go through the questionnaire, if they want to have a client come in and actually ask the questions, can just go through and check off the answers. Uh, it has the templates that they want in there. And again, streamlines the process. So it keeps the cost down, improves the experience for the client and the lawyer. But if they've got someone they like and that lawyer's qualified and they meet the standards that we ha that we hold for them, which are fairly high, um, then they certainly can become a vanilla approved attorney. Uh, David, can you talk a little bit about the pricing on the platform? Yeah, so um, th there's really two pieces. Uh, the first is from an advisor perspective, there's a per seat license that um, covers uh, the document review, the family wealth summary, um, the opportunity generation, all those things. And that's priced in tiers um, depending on the type of client. So our basic tier all the way up to our ultra high net worth individual tier. Um, and, you know, so any, anywhere from a few thousand dollars a year to uh, far more expensive for ultra high net worth. Um, and then the way documents work is actually very different where that's the client paying. Right. So uh, being, you know, on the vanilla platform allows you to give access to clients. Um, they pay around fifteen hundred dollars for documents that would otherwise cost fifteen thousand dollars. Right. Um, and uh, there's uh, uh, all the states we cover and we're going to continue to add states there as well. Yeah. And lawyer and, and advisors do have the option if they want to effectively buy tokens and pay for their clients documents legally, they can do that. But we've set the system up to create a barrier between the advisor and the lawyer. So they, they're not at risk of uh, the unauthorized practice of law or UPL. So we, we went to great lengths to make sure we protect the advisor from not acting like an attorney. Um, but if that's something that an advisor wants to include as part of their fee or service, then then that's, that function is available. Yeah, so Steve, with with advisors that are, you know, estate planning experts or are, like yourself that are, are very passionate about this, how, how can vanilla be a tool for them to to add to their practice? So I'll, I'll talk about at least the way that, that I use it and intend to use it uh, as we roll out the, the ultra solution. Um, one, the, the personal financial statements that are very complex that we do manually, that take a lot of time, that, are, that were done in Excel, are now going to be in here and automated and updated based on the data flows that are available. Um, the spreadsheets that we do around uh, private real estate or private equity and uh, capital 
RRs, that stuff will be automated into the system. Um, documents, it's, it, I'm amazed at how many people I know that are smart people, successful people that either have old documents or no documents. And so the amount of documents that I've been able to generate for clients um, is has been amazing. And even someone like myself, for my, both of my kids are unmarried, but adults, I didn't even think about it until it came up that I had to have a HIPAA release and healthcare and financial power. So I was able to send that out and that was 99 bucks. Uh, and, and my kids filled it out we got them notarized and signed. And so now if there's a medical emergency, we can get all the information we need. And so I, I'm sending that out to uh, clients. Um, but, but lastly, there are pieces of this beyond just the initial um, balance sheet and documents like, you know, we call it ice because I want something called vanilla ice. Uh, but in case of emergency where a, a client can go in and they know who are all, all the, you know, dad dies. Who are all the fiduciaries? Where's all the money? What what are my digital assets? You know, what what are my plans? For my dad? All that information is built into the system. And the system's constantly asking you to update that. Not too much, but enough so the information is, is current. Um and so that's another way that I'll use it. And then lastly, is we do actual estate, complex estate planning transactions, and we have um, idgets, you know, sales to defective grantor trust or grats or leases or just crummy powers for, um, you know, crummy letters need to be cranked out on an annual basis for insurance trusts. All that stuff gets put in the system and automated, collects the evidence. So if you ever have an IRS audit, that information is there for you. So. Now I can say ecosystem. It really creates this ecosystem where as it collects more and more information and as more time goes on, it collects more information. It is proactively getting the advisor to do more things for the client. Hey, Matt, don't forget your life insurance premium is coming up in 60 days. You need to sign a crummy letter to fund your insurance trust. Oh, I would have forgot. Well, now it's coming from Steve, the advisor, to Matt, the client, and I look like I'm doing a good job helping them remember things, but the system's doing it for me. And I think also like what we've seen as well is people that already have some sort of estate planning uh, understanding, um, this has also been really effective to refer others, right? Because so like I get asked all the time, hey, David, I know you did spend time on your documents. How'd you do them? Right. Well, you can't go to who I use because it's too expensive and it's not reasonable. Right. So, uh, OK, well, here are the same documents that I would have used um, at a price that's reasonable so I can refer friends and family and others that I may not typically be able to serve as an advisor directly into this platform, even if I'm at the super high end. Right. Um, so that's been effective as well. And I think when you also look at this ecosystem, you know, this this ongoing reporting also starts to put more and more of these things at the forefront. So even if I'm doing estate planning things, one of the things that now ends up in the report is the tasks that have been done since the last report. Right. So what if what have you done for me lately report? Right. And this is super effective to be able to say, hey, uh, me as Steve, I did these four things for you uh, and half of them were in vanilla and half of them I did on my own. Right. Yeah, Steve, that also leads to, you know, kind of one of the questions that comes up for uh, advisors that might not be as focused on the estate planning that are more on the financial planner or the asset management side, but have referred out in the past and their clients might have those bad documents or old documents. Um, how do how do they how can they use vanilla to go have that conversation in an intelligent manner? It goes back to the um, uploading and reporting process. So on your advisor dashboard, the uh, advisor literally can just upload documents th that exist. And within a week, they get back a very detailed report, which has the very nice graphics and lays out, here's what your current plan says, and here are the opportunities. So weaknesses that need to be improved. Like you might say, yes, I have life insurance, or the client has life insurance, but it's own personally. So recommending an irrevocable life insurance trust is a, a simple example, or it might have something like mandatory distributions, which we think is bad from creditor protection standpoint. So it gives the advisor the opportunity to go to the client and say, hey, I, 
I'm, I'm not an expert, but we utilize a solution that actually reviews your information so they don't have to pretend to be something that they may not be and identify these opportunities that you should address. Either address them with your attorney or if you want to actually redo your documents, it may be cheaper to do that than having to just modify what you had before. So we wanted to solve that problem for advisors so that, as, as Dave and I've said, they don't have to become estate planning experts. They just have to know how to upload documents look at some pictures and give it to the client. They only have to look at it. Uh, it's self-explanatory for the client as well. And then from there, it'll give them a roadmap on ways that they can help uh, the consumer improve their estate planning. Great. One of the other questions that came in was uh, from somebody that's, that's already up using the system, but what, what advice do you have for uh, these advisors that are trying to push this through to get clients moving on, on getting their documents done? I, I mean, my answer for folks is I, you have to bug them because nobody wants to deal with their estate plan for the most part. I mean, I, I, I'm seeing it today even as easy it is because you can knock out your docs in 20, 30 minutes uh, of, uh, and probably faster if you already know the answers to your questions. Um, so it's just staying on. Fortunately, the software actually reminds the consumers that they need to do it and continues to remind them at a, a reasonable cadence with hopefully not being uh, too annoying. Um, but we, we create a lot of content to explain to consumers and, and provide the advisors information they can explain to their consumers about why it's important to get these documents done. Um, I think the other thing too is you can make this an opportunity to deepen a relationship, right? And say, hey, let's hop on a Zoom call um, and start the process together. Because what we found is when people see how easy the process is, there's less intrepidation about it, right? Compared to what they think it's going to be like, oh man, I got to talk to a lawyer and waste all this time. And I got like, so a 30 minute Zoom call um, can really do that. Uh, and just show people, look, like here are the five questions you're going to answer at the beginning. The rest of the questions are like that. I can help you do these questions if you want and you know kind of walk through that process and make a deeper relationship than just say hey steve have you gone to the lawyer yet yeah and, and i i still use the same line i've been using for probably 20 years where if someone hasn't done it yet because it's important particularly if they've got kids for example um you know i've I got a few lines that i'll throw at them which is everything from Good news, just got back from REI, I got a new tent and I'll be in your front yard until we get these finished because they're that important. Or if you and your spouse can't figure out who is gonna be the uh, guardian for your kids, because that's the number one fight I hear, like don't worry about it, the state's got it all figured out. They may have to stay at, a, at somebody else's house for a while while it gets solved, but it's all cool. And that usually will spur people into understanding that we really do need to take care of this um, because like I said, if we have kids, it's important. I would say too, also, there's been some more recent news with both famous and very wealthy people that did not have plans in place. Um, so I think using those as, you know, opportunities to have a conversation is helpful as well. Right. And Hey, look, like this person definitely should have had a plan like everyone didn't. And now we publicly get to see what happens, which is not good or fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the questions that just came into was, will the system be able to handle special needs trusts and or more complex trusts in the future? In the future, maybe. I mean, those are things that usually you're going you're gonna to want an attorney to draft uh, the particular language in there. So today, when a client goes through, there's some weed out questions in the beginning. It says if you've got elder care needs or special needs, uh, this probably isn't right for you because, again, we're trying to solve the, va the vanilla issue you know for most of the people um, but ultimately there will be a version where the attorneys can edit the document and add those things if they need to uh, but it's not what we started with right um, just scanning through a couple more questions here um, sorry uh, one of the questions was if, can an advisor recommend an attorney that's in a state uh, that Vanilla is not currently up and running? Uh, you, you mean, can they bring their own lawyer, um, as, as I assume the question is, uh, to the platform? So yeah. in this case, the answer is yes and no. Um, so 
we only allow that in states that we've uh, onboarded because we require the document to be reviewed locally and a number of other things have to happen for us to approve a state beyond just the document. Uh, and, but yes, you can bring your own lawyer, you can have them review it, you can go through that process and use our documents. Uh, the pricing is the same, um, so it's up to you how you do it. Uh, but we do require that it be a state that we've onboarded and we're onboarding more and more. For, uh, for FAs that are worried about UPL, how does Vanilla make sure that the advisor is protected? Yeah, uh, as, as I mentioned, um, the system sends out a, uh, well, there's three different ways. I mean, there's multiple ways, but the three big ways are um, there's a engagement letter between the attorney and the client. The client pays the attorney. Um, and at the end of the document, there's a selection process where you can use your own attorney. You can use one of our, our attorneys, or you can effectively just download the documents yourself. So they're given a choice and there's always an attorney involved. And so it'd be very hard for any state to argue that when this was actually referred out to an attorney, there's an engagement with the, the attorney, and then it's attorney reviewed with the client that the advisor is committed to UPL. Um, and someone in the industry was kind enough in California to turn us in to uh, <laughs> the state board. And so the good news is they reviewed everything like, nope, you guys are doing everything right. But we, we had a fire drill early in the process, which was fantastic to make sure that we were doing everything right, which fortunately we were. Great. Um, can this be tailored for all types of trustees? I'm not sure I understand the question. Asking if they could use corporate trustees. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, use any kind of trustee. Um, the next question was, when will Ultra be available? So uh, we, we've already started to build a lot of these features. Um, I, I would say in the next few weeks, uh, as we start to really roll it out, we're already starting to test some of these things like right. balance sheet and pulling in more data and a lot of these other pieces that will you know, ultimately become Ultra. Uh, so we have a few people on board to it now. And I think as we continue to get feedback and roll out additional features, we will make it more widely available. Um, but if, if someone has a specific question about Ultra, we're happy to talk about it and you know show you what exists today and our plans for it. Um, but we are being a little bit slower in rolling it out um, as we want to make sure we have the feedback directly from clients on it. Yeah, that's why, that's why I smiled. So Monday, I'll start testing it and other folks have been testing it. And um, so, but we want to make sure it's right. Um, question that just came in, which is, it's interesting is vanilla allows financial advisors to become a one-stop shop. Uh, is, is there the fear that when the, the platform rolls out for attorneys that they'll be able to come the one-stop shop uh, and replace the advisor? Absolutely. As attorneys are probably the most reactive uh, people in the financial planning continuum that I've seen. They wait for the clients to call them. Uh, they don't proactively go after them. They have no interest in knowing what's going on the rest of their life for the most part. I, I, sure, maybe there'll be an enterprising attorney here or there that decides they want to become a financial planner. And I think even in Massachusetts, uh, lawyers are allowed to become RIAs, um, but that's not something I think we are going to see as an issue. And again, we're giving advisors the ability to do the estate planning piece, but doesn't mean that the lawyers all of a sudden are going to figure out how to do asset allocation and financial planning and understanding all the other pieces. They're going to have to go out and get that knowledge somewhere else. Not, not something I'd worry about. Great. Um, as the questions continue to roll in and we, we filter through some of those, what, what are you guys most excited about uh, with vanilla and, and what's going on in the industry and the disruption? Yeah, so I think I touched on this a little bit, but really making this available to a larger and larger set of people is is the most exciting part of it. Um, where traditionally this was reserved for you know very very, uh, I mean even at the very top end, right, ultra high net worth individuals. So making this available to more people because um, it's really what is needed, and um, looking at kind of the the forward looking things that we're doing, um, really allowing advisors to deepen their practice. Um, retain customers longer and get more customers. Uh, those are exciting for us. 
as we help an advisor be more successful. Yeah, I, to, to lever off what Dave said, it isn't just making it available to more people. The marketplace is going to grow dramatically. If the exemption limit comes down to, you know, they threaten three and a half million per person, the, the number of clients that advisors have where estate tax is a reality is going to go up exponentially. Um, so, so that issue is something that we look forward to helping people solve. Um, but, but also being a better advisor, the estate planning and, and the, the, just the creation of their wills. And as David said, the, the personal financial statement, knowing everything about them, it's a very intimate part of the relationship, right? You know who they love, you know what their balance sheet is, you know who they want to get what and when, you know what their philosophy is around money. I mean, I think it really tightens the relationship between the advisor and the client. And one of our missions is to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make the advisor look like a hero by proactively prompting them. And as we said, even prompting the client from them, if they don't do it, to do a better job, to be a better advisor, to go into areas where they're not as familiar. And that's what we want to do. We want to touch more consumers um, by making advisors better. Um, and that's what the platform really is all about. Great. Um, a question that uh, has come across a couple times is, uh, again, which we hit on earlier a little bit, David, was some of the integrations, but also is vanilla planning to replace a financial planning tool to complement it? How will this, how, how will vanilla slide into an advisor's tech stack? Yeah. So yes. we, really, we really envision this not as a replacement, but much more as a complement to a lot of the other things that are out there. Right. So if it's a, a platform that tracks transactions or details like that, you know, we don't we don't want to be in that space of tracking transactions um, or asset allocation or risk profiles. Right. Um, we want to think at a higher level to be able to deepen that relationship and say, hey, here's what's really happening across different asset classes, not within you know equities. Right. Um, and so I think when you start to look at a, a whole solution, um, we, we integrate really well with that. And then also as well, depending on the CRM they use. You know, our, our vision is to continue to integrate with more and more of those. So these opportunities could be surfaced in that CRM so solution. If it's Salesforce or whatever, we don't really care, um, but allow that flow and process to happen as it naturally would with our intelligence being put into it. Awesome. Well, this is, this is a fun question. Uh, how can I trial the platform and how can I sign up? <laughs> yeah. uh, Go ahead, Steve. Okay. Uh, so uh, tri trialing, uh, you can reach out to us. We'll talk to you about it. Um, the, the trials are pretty typical in that we just usually do a report to show you what it looks like. You can download a report and look at it right now. Um, you can do your own documents as an advisor if you want to feel out that process. Um, but outside of that, we, we typically stay away from typical trials. Um, and we can talk about demos and such. And obviously, we do those in webinars and things like that. JustVanilla.com. Awesome. Well, I think those were all the questions today. So uh, thank you very much for, for taking the time to talk about this, Steve and David. Uh, and everybody, thank you for taking the time to attend. And please feel free to reach out to us with any questions. And uh, if we didn't get to something that you asked, uh, we'll certainly reach out. Thank you. <laughs>